from Ix Art Park in Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm Jovina. This is your Daily Creature. Thank you for being here, friends. As you know, this week we've been talking about creatures in the ocean. Well, I want you for a moment for today to forget the ocean. Leave the ocean to Jacques Cousteau. Today, the creatures we're talking about exist in the sea. We are setting sail on the open sea for these creatures. We're using our imaginations and everything we can pull together from myth and legend. That's right, friends, from Leviathan to the Kraken, from Sirens to Meg, it's sea monsters that we love. And that's what we're talking about today. Scary, elusive. Are they just the stuff of myth? Are they just legends? Yes, maybe. Are they leftover dinosaurs? Could be. I don't know. Let's explore. Let's find out. Let's enjoy it. Uh, friends, quick bit of housekeeping here. You may have noticed there's been quite a buildup of seaweed <laughs> everywhere. And um, I'm kind of just trying to clear some away. I see a formidable pile here. I'm going to uncover, I think it's books, but Get some of the seaweed out of the way and figure out what is down here and get a look at it. <gasps> By all things unholy in all seven swirling of the seven swirling seas. This is a true sea monster, a true monster indeed. It's an unfinished project. I recognize it. There is no monster quite like an unfinished project. Ooh. It's my unfinished project. And I have been chasing it. And frankly, it's been chasing me for a while. Oh, I can't even look at it. Friends, do you have unfinished projects? Do they chase you? You chase them. I can't look at it. Let's focus on any other project, any other project. Clayquarium, part four, our ongoing project. And here we have our Clayquarium. And this is part four of the Clayquarium. So for those of you just jumping in now, it may be a little confusing. Uh, we have here our box, our rocks, the paper that we painted a bit of. That's our backdrop. <clears throat> we are missing our creatures. I'll just throw them in there as a reminder. We have the inhabitants of our clay aquarium. Three orange fish. One hippo. And we've got our, our octopus as well. And um, before we get into what will likely be the final creature that we'll put into the clay aquarium, because frankly, we're running out of room, we're going to take a quick look at our backdrop. And uh, we're going to add a little pizzazz. I, I believe you could say it's pizzazz. We're going to throw that glue stick back in the mix. And for the first time on the daily creature, please welcome glitter. We're going to use a little bit of glitter. Don't be bitter, use some glitter. Because you know what? Say what you will about glitter. There are certain things glitter can do that nothing else can do. So, this is a pretty quick and easy thing. To add some glitter to our water background, I'm going to essentially draw out with the glue stick the design I want the glitter to uh, appear in. And you know, design, use that word loosely and lightly. It's really just a couple of squiggles. I keep them kind of skinny and I run them. You can see I'm running them along kind of in the same direction that we did the paint. I don't know if I'll go too low with them. I think I'll go about as low as that spot right along here. Um, again, everything was removed. Obviously, uh, the plants were taken up as well. We do have some lovely plastic plants. We'll get them back in there soon enough. I get my cap back on my glue stick, which is important to keep that cap on the glue stick. Otherwise, guess what happens? It dries out. Now we have our glitter, and it's just a kind of a whitish glitter. It's an older glitter. 
from another time. But glitter stands the test of time. Glitter can be neither created nor destroyed, I believe. That's um, just very lightly, very lightly hit the expanse of the paper. You want to do this as soon as possible so that it, it sticks where you put glue. Friends, this will be subtle, this effect. What I'm doing now is just shaking that glitter off of the paper. And with the glitter off of the paper, rather, the excess glitter off of the paper, and now it's sort of up inside the box in our clay aquarium. Um, I'll have to get rid of that. You get just that subtle sort of effect. It's very nice, and we can return our creatures roughly to the place that they came from, and we'll get the plants back in there momentarily as well. And I think I'll move the hippo a bit and try and put our our last creature in there somewhere. Speaking of our last creature, let's clear our workspace. And I vacuumed most of the glitter here. We're going to work with two different colors for this sea monster that we're going to create. Yes, a little sea monster. And for our sea monster, we're going to go with the idea that it's a leftover dinosaur. And this will be a rather quick and simple creature. And you'll note right away I'm taking the light and the dark colors of green, and I'm mixing them. And you know what? I've just had a thought before I do. I'm going to take a little extra of the dark as it is and a little extra of the light as it is. And I'm going to set them aside and continue to mix. I don't think I'll mix these all the way. I just want to get a nice marbly sort of green. I'm rolling out with a flat hand. I'm, I'm getting there. I think I want it to be a bit more mixed. Mixing and mixing. I'm rolling. It shakes things up a bit, doesn't it? And folks, you're going to want to mix that until you get it. You know, that is if you're mixing clay for your sea monster at all. I'm liking this, this sort of color that I've created right here. And we're going to bring it out a bit. We'll put that on the side. And for our plesiosaur, we're going to keep in mind the style that we're working with for that clay aquarium, which again is that kind of flat creature. And I'm going to set this piece aside. For those of you that are not familiar with the plesiosaur, it is a water dinosaur with a long neck. Let me do a quick sketch of one here. Long neck, almost like a brontosaurus or a diplodocus. A big old body here with fins. flippers like a sea lion would have and it swims and I don't think it has a very long tail we're not going to give ours a long tail you know and there he is and maybe he's chasing a fish or something I don't know if we'll get quite so detailed even as this drawing with our clay plesiosaur but here's a bit of reference that we can work with it's a handmade reference day friends so I've set aside a bit already and you if you've joined me for a sculpture before, then you know that we're going to save that for the, the flippers of El Policiosaur. I get those pincher fingers going, as I am like to do, and I start to work out the, the neck of my Policiosaur. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go weirdly thin with his neck. I don't know why. Good news. We got the lights back on, by the way, obviously. I still... Can't seem to get back to that unfinished project, though. It's so nice to 
not think about that unfinished project and just focus on this unfinished project. There we go. I'm happy with that. Right away, I'm thinking about the size of our Clayquarium. I'm a little worried about the size of the Plesiosaur. So I've just reduced the body size. Totally extra clay now, setting that aside. It means I probably won't need as much for the flippers as well. But at this time, I will roll that piece out. And I'm going to break down two smaller pieces for my Plesiosaur's back fins and two slightly larger for my Plesiosaur's front fins or flippers. I do the old one finger roll, two fingers, you don't need much, and get those pinch your fingers in there. Create a teardrop shape for me, if you would, and then do the same thing again and flatten between the pinch your fingers and flatten, right? Get that flipper shape, y'all. And uh, I'm going to do the same exact thing with these little bits. Flattening, making pointy, just like a teardrop, green teardrop. Rolling it between my fingers, flattening. Like so. Cool, cool, cool. I'm going to get in there with the old pinchers and work out kind of the, the hint of the tail. And then I'm going to grab flippers and get them going, get them smoothed in. And as I look at that flipper, it seems a bit large, but I can adjust. I can adjust. I'm going to smooth as we do the smaller piece into the bigger piece. This guy, as we've done with the other clayquarium creatures, I'm going to go ahead and stick this on the other side of him. We'll smooth that into and flatten it. We don't want it to um, disturb his position too much. And uh, I'm going to grab the smaller ones as well. We'll start with the back one on this guy, just underneath there. And then the front, press it, smooth it in there. Fantastic. And uh, once you've got them smoothed on, you can do some positioning, you know, kind of bring it out, adjust the flipper, make it work. Make it work. Get into those details and think about the position, the gesturing. What does it look like? This guy's swimming through the water, you know. He's going to have a lift to his flipper, maybe. And that long neck. And, you know, why don't we open up his mouth? How can we open his mouth? Do we have a tool on hand? It was not initially included in my lineup, was it? I'm going to let's look at that head for a moment. One thing I'd like to do here is take a I'll go with lighter green, roll up just a small ball shape and pop it right there onto the head and kind of smooth it in a bit. I'm liking that. I know now that I have a place for my plesiosaur's eye right here. Yeah, we'll get that hole in there like so. I'll also give him a little nostril with my pencil. Just like that. Now, I'm going to show you a fun trick wherein you can take a piece of cardboard like so, just cardboard ripped from a small box, and I can take that cardboard and make a cut. a little clay on the table. Once I've made that cut, I can open that mouth up. But again, friends, that was just a little, little piece of cardboard here ripped from a small box. And I was able to slice through that small face of my plesiosaur to create his mouth. I might reduce the size of the uh, <clears throat> lower jaw just a bit. Go in there and pinch. 
And uh, I might also take that little extra bit, roll it up into a, a ball shape and add it as a kind of a, a slightly uh, enlarged jaw there. There we go. Give them that dino, that dino feel. And um, I'll bring them down here. He's looking good. He's hanging out with the drawing a bit. Best friends. And I think we'll go for a bead eye as we have with our other creatures involved in the clay aquarium. We've got these beads here. You don't have to use beads, of course. Um, if you don't have any beads on hand, then frankly, you can't use beads, right? So you may have to improvise and use something different. A little bit of clay will work as will many other things when it comes to doing eyes for your creature. Let's get this eye off of his neck. I'm gonna take the bead and I'm gonna pop it into that designated spot, you know, and I'm gonna press it in. There we go. And um, <clears throat> I am going to add a little tiny worm. You guys know I'd love to do a little eyelid, just a little, almost like a piece of rice here. I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it on the eye to give him the the intense and angry sort of look. Not angry, really, just intense, I guess. The intense look of a underwater reptile on the hunt, a sea monster, a plesiosaur. Could be the Loch Ness monster, right? There's one we haven't talked about. Fun stuff. Shall we put you into the clay aquarium? I think we shall. And here we are, back in the clay aquarium. We may need to make some room for our newcomer. I'm gonna just pop the hippo this way a bit, the octopus down a bit. Not bad. We'll go lower with the octi, this guy here. You know, composition, you'll work it out. One step closer to a finished clay aquarium. I think we're nearly there. And frankly, I look forward to finishing up this project tomorrow. I hope you're enjoying it. Clay aquarium. Imagine you are a sea captain and you're standing on your boat and suddenly you're aware of a very large form larger than your boat, coming toward the boat rapidly and moving beneath the boat. You know it's alive, you know it's dangerous, you know it's big. What does it look like? What does your sea monster look like? I'm genuinely curious. What does your sea monster look like? I'm imagining mine. Scary. Hey, um, maybe I'll just tell you a little bit about this unfinished project of mine. I just want to, I want to um, jump back in a little here, uh, or at least talk about it and, and, and handle it a bit. So he's an octopus and uh, I made him using masking tape, as you can see, and some, some wonderful bendy wire here, plastic coated wire, quite safe. And, uh, a heavy duty foam for uh, puppet building or sculpture and, and it's nice and light, this head, so I can even bend up these wires and really give him a little more personality and a, a whole other kind of a stance, you know, he'll sit nicely. Uh, but not just any octopus, right? Part of this project was that he was going to be a moptopus. This is clean mop, mop strings, a mop head. And um, what I was basically going to do was coat the head and each tentacle with mop strings so that he's a, a, a fully, fully uh, realized moptopus, octopus made of mop. Um, there might be eyes, there might be suckers. I, I hadn't gotten that far. It's an unfinished project. 
it's an unfinished project. And you know what? Uh, uh, let's work on something else. Can we work on something else? Let's work on something else. Sea monster, movie poster. Don't go in the water. Okay, friends. So <clears throat> it's a handmade reference day here at the Daily Creature. And uh, let's talk sea monsters briefly before we jump into our exercise. Little, little reference, little discussion. We've got Leviathan, giant snake. Look him up. Leviathan, classic sea monster of myth and legend. You've got the siren, you know. The siren sings a beautiful song, luring sailors and their boats into the sharp, jagged rocks that are also a part of the sirens whole thing. Look up the sirens. Sirens are super cool. I chose to make my jagged rocks also kind of like a monster. I think I saw that somewhere. I don't remember where, but the siren, big part of, I believe it's Greek mythology. Get the siren out of here. The kraken. I thought the kraken was Greek mythology, but upon closer observation, the kraken is actually Norse uh, mythology and uh, often depicted as some sort of a cephalopod, a squid. I gave him some horns and I've got a rather cranky kraken, as krakens go. Um, <clears throat> this guy is a uh, gill man, the creature, AKA the creature from the Black Lagoon um, from the 1954 Universal Horror Picture, creature from the Black Lagoon. That's right, and I put him in a little suit here for you, dressed him up, he's saying hi, and he actually inspires me <clears throat> toward our next uh, project here, which is low stress, low key, lots of fun. Grab the sketchbook. I've got my Micron graphic number one, <clears throat> nice thick line. And what I would like to do, I'm gonna grab a pencil as well for good measure. I wanna create a fun made up sea monster horror movie poster. Uh, and I'm playing around with it here. There's going to be some lettering. There's going to be an image. I'm going to make up a movie on the spot right now. Let's call the movie. Um, let's call the movie Gill Beast. Gill Beast. I like that. Gill Beast. So I'm going to put the title Gill Beast up here. And uh, I'm going to make it in kind of a block letter form. But I think what I will do to start is just sketch those letters out in pencil. Just sketch these letters out in pencil to be safe. Gill beast. So we're going to do a big G I L. We'll do two L's across there. Gill. And then beneath it, beast. Big, bold letters. Let me ask you this. Do you like lettering within your drawing? Do you ever do letters? Do you add titles, speech bubbles? Do you like calligraphy? I love lettering. Uh, it's fun and it's a fun challenge because there's a certain regularity. Part of the reason that I write this out ahead of time is it's just, it's, it's the plan. I want to know where to go when I hit it with the marker. And I'm gonna go in now with the, uh, the marker rather than the pen. And again, <clears throat> I'm going to go with block lettering, but I'm going to follow to a certain degree the lines I've laid out in pencil. Gill beast, big, bold Hollywood lettering, right? And right now, even as I'm working out my title, I'm thinking about two things because again, making it up as I go along here for the gill beast. A, what does the gill beast look like? And B, what's the tagline for my movie, Gill Beast, here? Because I'll put that down at the bottom of the poster. So I've got Gill Beast written out. I'm happy with it. It'll work. 
Now I'm going to work out the Gill Beast itself, the image on my fun Sea Monster movie poster, my on the fly movie poster. Uh, the Gill Beast is going to be, it's going to have a, a head like a, a fish. And we're going to get him from the side view here, and I'm going to start with the eye of my fish. I'm going to work out the head, lips, sharp teeth. We have to give him some kind of gills, so there's his gills. And he is vicious because it's a sea monster movie. He may be a little misunderstood. He may not even really, he may not be the bad guy. He may be the good guy or helping the good guys. I'm going to give him a kind of a spiky head up there. And uh, I'm trying to think about arms now, and I'm, I'm sticking with nautical choices and underwater creaturey sorts of features. So I'm going to go with a kind of a, a claw here, crab claw. And I'm going to make that crab claw open. Now. I'm playing fast and loose here because I cannot erase this. I simply have to keep going. If I end up doing something I don't like, well, I'll have to deal with it. I'll have to work with it. I'll have to get used to it, work with it, be okay with it. Little details here as I go. I'm gonna throw another claw out maybe here. And that one open as well. So the claw behind him. Just do a little shadow back there. I can't resist, even though I tell myself I would like to wait until I get to the end of the broad strokes of this creature before I start doing details. I just sometimes, when I'm sketching and doodling like this, I kind of just jump into the details right away. Is that okay? I think that's okay. And now I think for his 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 lower half, I'm gonna give him some tentacles right off the page there slightly. I wanna leave room for my tagline down here. So I'll get these tentacles going. And you know, given that we're making this creature up as we go along. I don't necessarily think we need to give it eight tentacles or ten tentacles or match any sort of natural order for that. We'll just give it as many tentacles as we want. Before I continue with the drawing, I'm going to hit my, my tagline down here, which I think we're just going to say, keep it simple. Where did this thing come from? It came from the deep. It came from the deep. Because often that's what you want to know in a giant monster movie, right? And I'm going to say the Gil Beast is giant. Where did this thing come from? It came from the deep. It, you know, plan it out, came from, and I'm going to do a small the, <laughs> so I can fit deep in there. And why not an exclamation point? Because, hey, this is big news. And, uh... For these letters, I think I'll go, well, I'll stick with block letters, but I have to be really careful now to keep my block letters small to stay within the sort of parameters I set for myself with the pencil. And you'll note I'm, I'm steadying my pad with a finger while I draw these because with letters, there's a certain amount of, again, an exactness that you really need to attempt to maintain. Clarity is so important. If you've chosen to write something, well, you want it to be readable, legible. And I think I'm, I'm going to skip the block letters for my the, but we'll move back to it for the word deep. It came from the deep. With my tagline out of the way, and I feel good about the spacing there, I'm going to go back to my creature, 
And um, a question I have now is, should I avoid putting his tentacles behind the tagline? And my, my thoughts are, yes, I'm not going to put the tentacles in behind the tagline. I'm going to keep the tagline free of drawing. And I'm going to attempt to roll out a tentacle here. And another one, perhaps, from behind him up here. And I think we'll, we'll call it at that and kind of add in some details, try to make sense of this sort of mess that the lower part of his body is. Sorry, Gilbeast. That was really not a very nice thing to say about the lower part of your body, was it? Hitting those details, kind of bringing the whole Gil Beast together. I'm liking the way he looks. And uh, I think we may be nearly through. I think what I might do is just add a city skyline. You know, a city skyline to show that he's, he's in the city. He's arrived. He's here. Gil Beast dwells among us, and boy, is he wreaking some havoc. And something tells me he's going to kidnap someone important, perhaps, in those claws, and try not to hurt him or her, but carry them, perhaps, somewhere. You never, ever know. Now, friends, I am going to color Gil Beast, but I'm going to do it in super speed, because I think it's nice to add color. See if I can still speed color. I was a fine speed colorer in my youth. Let's give it a try. Funny story, friends. I did color the Gil Beast. Uh, I attempted to film coloring the Gil Beast. I was going to speed it up because that was part of my speed coloring joke. It was a joke. I'm, I'm no speed colorer. Um, however, I lost that video due to a technical issue. Uh, not a big deal. We roll with it. I still wanted to show you my colored uh, Gil Beast, my finished Gil Beast here. I used Crepa. I don't know if I mentioned that. I think I did not. Or I mentioned it on the video that I lost. So Crepa is a lot like crayon, a little bit nicer. Frankly, these Crepas, um, they're so-so. They're okay. But I, I like the look of my, my crazy Gil Beast uh, movie poster. Gil Beast, it came from the deep, uh, coming to a theater near you and your imagination. Thanks, friendos. Oh, hey, monsters. I'm back at it with the moptopus. I don't know what happened. When I was telling you about the project, I suddenly felt inspired again. Creative inspiration returned. Can I explain it? I cannot. I do know that once it did, I remembered I had this big roll of newsprint. Something that was bothering me about the Moptopus was uh, the thinness of these tentacles, and I couldn't figure out how to bulk them up in a way that was lightweight and affordable. The newsprint is perfect. I'm wrapping it around. I'm using an old favorite of mine, uh, masking tape, to adhere the paper to the wire. Next step, of course, will be adhering the mop string to the paper, but I do think that will be easier. And while I don't know how I'm going to do that exactly, maybe hot glue, breakout beanie, I don't know. The fact is I'm excited about that not knowing. That's all kind of tied up into the, uh, the crazy mop that is creative inspiration. Oh, also, I almost forgot, possibly his eyes, these ornaments maybe, you know? I don't know, I don't know, but I'm excited. And that's the thing, I can't explain it but I'm gonna grab on and I'm gonna make art with it. And there it is. Friends, from Ix Art Park in Charlottesville, Virginia, I'm Jovina, this has been your daily creature. And remember this monsters, art making like a voyage on the high seas, like this very life itself is an adventure. Expect ups and downs. And in the face of all of those ups, and all of those downs, stay creative.